On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're taking you to Los Angeles, California to meet Natalie Wong, who has decorated her home in the fabulous Hollywood Regency style and has filled it full of one of a kind vintage and thrifted pieces. But first, a big thanks to Ritual for sponsoring today's Homeworthy episode. I have a little secret to share. Every day when I wake up, I head to the kitchen to eat a handful of frozen dark chocolate chips. I've been doing it for years and no, it's not the healthiest habit. But to make sure I'm packing in the nutrients in the morning, I've started to have a Ritual Essential Protein Shake. It's plant-based, which I love, and helps build and maintain muscle, keeps me feeling full, and supports brain and bone health. Plus, it's super easy to make. It's just one scoop of the vanilla flavored powder mixed with water and you just shake it. Now is the time to invest in your gut. For Black Friday and Cyber Monday, Ritual is offering 40% off when you bundle with Symbiotic Plus. Just click on my link to get on the right track this year and let your gut thank you later. All of this helps to make sure I can keep up with my little toddler, James. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Natalie. Welcome to my K-Town Chateau. I'm Natalie Wong. I have a background doing meetings and events, as well as marketing, but I am currently a producer for a streaming platform at Disney. We are in Koreatown, um, just on the southwest side. So um, this place was built in the 1930s. It's uh, French Normandy style. Um, You'll see a lot of other homes in this neighborhood similar in architecture. We're in the living room now. This is the showstopper. Um, This is the space that made me fall in love with this place and um, it's become this collection of things I've been collecting from estate sales, garage sales, thrift stores, antique stores. And I think finding these unique pieces is really what separates a house from a home and makes a home very unique and personalized. So come on through and I can point out some of my favorite things. Um, This fan up here is actually an Amazon purchase. So um, that is just a nice statement piece I like to have in the center of the space. Um, So this piece here, I found it on eBay. Um, I'm starting to become a little bit more intentional with these little like trinket things I have. So I might have that be a catch and release square. I found it and now I can like resell it. (laughs) Not necessarily good bargains, but you know, I'm a treasure hunter and I'll like look anywhere for anything. Um, Back before Facebook Marketplace and like OfferUp really exploded, I was also searching for things on Craigslist. I did a lot of Craigslist searching and there was an artist who was like based on the East Coast and he was like selling these prints on Craigslist. Um, And his name is Josh Young, he's based in DC. I just thought it was kind of like a fun little interpretation of you know like the french versailles aesthetic and um he just has like really fun art and now he actually has collaborations with like cb2 and he's a big deal so um check him out josh young the ceramic leopard i scored that off of a lady from offer up um that used to belong to her mother and this Moroccan poof um, came from my trip to Marrakesh uh, for my 40th birthday a couple years ago. And the coffee table here is actually from the Rose Bowl flea market. So one of my earliest acquisitions um, when I was starting to decorate and furnish this place. So I like to collect little small objects when I travel. So this lighter, that's not working right now, but um, purely decorative. I got that from a little antique shop in Dallas. And then this little green piece, I just love because it's like actually made from glass. And if you look down here, like the seller 
would have a little story back here on who made it. And so it's amethyst glass and I just think it's like so beautiful. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. I like to collect things when I travel just as like a souvenir of my uh, adventures. Um, this bar cart back here is from David Arquette's estate. So I won it at an auction and um, obviously it's vintage, um, but definitely one of the hero pieces um, of my home. These press for champagne buttons are actually made by a wonderful young lady named Lisa. Um, she's based in Austin, but these are at this point, I think like kind of world famous that she has a little storefront. Um, you just purchase them online and they sell out within a flash every time she launches a new set. So, um, Press for champagne. Oh, so Roger Moore, I mean, he's just so classic. And, you know, being just like 10 minutes away from Hollywood, I just wanted to have a reflection of that like old timey Hollywood glamour um, vibe. And I think Roger Moore in this like James Bond shaken, not stirred um, portrait just kind of like captures the essence of what I'm trying to create. Something that's like very glamorous, very Hollywood, very old school. So about six and a half years ago, I was in the market to buy an apartment and I was focusing mostly on the west side of Los Angeles, but noticed that all of the apartments there were highly coveted and I was just getting outbid. And I decided to look outside of the west side and came to Koreatown. This place was actually listed um, and featured on Curbed. Um, but for whatever reason, it was sitting on the market for a while. I think it was just overpriced and nobody was really here looking for properties. Um, they advertised it as a three bedroom, which is pretty sizable. Um, and you'll see in a second how large it is. Um, but I just walked into this living room and I mean, it was not furnished. The walls over here were completely covered in mirrors. It looked like a gymnasium. Um, but I fell in love with it because you see the French doors, um, the crown molding, the tall ceilings, and it was basically love at first sight. So totally top secret that all my plants in here are fake. Um, obviously the, we don't have like the same type of sunlight as would be recommended for large plants like this in here at all times of day. So these are all plastic plants that I've been kind of collecting. So. I think they're a nice feature. Um, the light fixtures next to the plants, those were also purchased from um, various folks from Facebook Marketplace, as were these chairs. Um, so as you can see, it's just kind of like a hodgepodge of things I've been collecting over the past five years. This credenza, um, I believe is a Drexel heritage piece, but my friend Rhett found it for me. I believe it was also on offer up, so secondhand to me. Um, and I had to borrow a friend's car and my mom was in town that day. So she came with me on this field trip and we brought it home and my dad was here and he was not super happy about this. But I feel like at this point, my friends and family members are just like very gracious about indulging me with helping me schlep things home, loving me borrow their car. So I'm very grateful for them. And I think this is just a perfect piece for this space. During the pandemic, I kind of became this accidental influencer, DIYer, content creator, and I couldn't afford an actual frame TV. So I went to the hardware store, bought molding and framed the TV. And I've watched other content creators and bloggers do this, but basically it's just a long piece of molding that I cut into four pieces and, um, nailed together and I do have a tutorial on my blog, but this is not the actual Samsung frame TV. It's just a Samsung TV that has been framed. <laughs> so the pillows were a happy accident. Um, they actually came from like Anthropology, CB2, House, and when you're putting throw pillows together, it's kind of hard to like figure out how they can be cohesive. So what I did was found, find a through line and what that is, is basically I picked jewel tones. So you see the purples on purples and the greens on greens. And you just, you know, 
kind of make it work. And I just threw them all together one day and I was like, huh, that really works out well. So there they are and I love it. This huge painting over here is actually from another estate sale and I was one of the last people to walk into the sale and it was 80% off. So I got it for something stupid like $100 and I didn't realize how much of a screaming deal that was until later when I realized that, you know, framing it alone probably would have been like hundreds of dollars. So this behemoth of a mirror, this grand dame, um, I bought it from Howard Elliott Designs and I had two girlfriends come over and they were supposed to help me bring it upstairs because I wanted it in my bedroom, but they dragged it up the stairs, we opened the box, and we got very unmotivated to like move it up the stairs. So we leaned it against this corner and that was another like accidental um, decorating thing where it just kind of like lives there now and it's become a statement piece. Well, another statement piece in this living room. This room used to have track lighting, um, which was quite popular in the 80s, I believe, and also horrible. And even my, you know, 70 year old dad was like, that needs to go. So away it went. I had an electrician come remove the track lighting and then I had bought this um, Lucite ribbon chandelier from a lady on eBay and she was based in Philadelphia and I somehow convinced her to pack it up and ship it and I think the shipping cost just as much as the actual fixture but I think it was worth it. I have a similar piece in my office upstairs. It's just so charming. I mean, the courtyard outside looks like something out of Disneyland, like well manicured. I actually own the turret, so it's actually my storage space right now, so we won't let you in there, but it's a disaster. It's something that I'm hoping to work on to finish someday. Um, but I mean, just all the rooms in this house are so lovely and um, I, I just really enjoy my time here. So um, again, this place was built in the 30s. So it was like kind of during the, like kind of the gilded age of Hollywood. And um, when you walk outside a few blocks, you can actually see the Hollywood sign. So I wanted to like honor that part of Los Angeles. And um, I kind of call this like an updated Hollywood, Hollywood Regency style design. Um, my inspiration was basically Jonathan Adler and then like earlier works of Kelly Worsler. So just off to the side of the dining room is my little kitchen. So I love this little service door here because we're fancy. So come on in, it's a little guy. Um, so uh, again with the black and white theme, um, I actually, I'm hoping to get this updated soon, at least the cabinets. I think the rest of it looks okay, but um, I do have aspirations for this space. There's actually nothing much in the fridge right now because I just came back from a long trip, but I mean, I always like to have at least wine in here um, with my ketchup. <laughs> but yeah, I always like to have like a bottle of champagne in there you just never know. I love a yogurt in the mornings. Um, so that's usually in there. My mom had made some noodles, so she made me bring them back. So that's in there. Um, but yeah, typically it's just, you know, I live a very simple bachelorette life where I just keep maybe like some salmon in there and some salad mixings. I, growing up, I've always been kind of a hippie. So sustainability is very important to me. And I really love to go treasure hunting for secondhand items, especially for my home and also my closet. Um, so a lot of things you see around here are from flea markets or thrift shops. I feel like there's just like way too much space up here and I wanted something above my bed. But, you know, being in California, we don't tend to put things above the bed for earthquake reasons. Um, the last thing I want is something heavy falling on my head you know, in the middle of the night if there were an earthquake. So I bought another fan. Um, I think that was also from Amazon and it does fill the space. Eventually, you know, I think I'm gonna 
change things up over there, but it'll do for now. So I was on my way to a wedding and had some items I wanted to pick up from like OfferUp or Craigslist. And this was one of them being this amazing acrylic or lucite palm chandelier. I got it for a screaming deal of $5. The man who sold it to me had advertised it as a Tommy Bahama inspired chandelier, which I think is why people were kind of turned off by it. Um, but I zoomed over there in my wedding outfit and he wasn't home, but I paid his, who I thought was his daughter because she was this little five-year-old and I dashed off and he messages me as I'm like in my car um, driving away saying he's sorry he missed me because he heard that I was cute. And I just had to think, you know, like the lengths that us women have to go through to like just pick up a freaking chandelier on Facebook Marketplace only to get hit on. It's like crazy. <laughs> So those shoes came from a thrift shop when I was in Charlotte, North Carolina with my friend Shauna. And I thought they were cool and felt that I could just wear them around the house. But it turns out they're made from like really flimsy cardboard. So the moment I walked around in them, they just like fell apart. So they're more decorative than anything else. So these nightstands, another Craigslist find, um, they it came as one and I went to pick it up and the woman said I actually have the second one but part of the front mirror is missing so you can have it if you want I was like yeah giving me like his twin for free I'll take that so I did and then spent you know maybe a hundred dollars to get a piece of mirror um, replaced on it from a local furniture store so this trinket box is also from my travels to Morocco and I just like to use a lot of black and white in my home kind of as a through line um, to make things consistent and to show a common theme. So you'll notice that a lot of my rugs are like black and white too. This door needs some work but I also painted this in black and white. Um, again a trompe l'oeil effect so this was just uh, paint and some painter's tape to help me get the line straight, but I had a little oopsie here. That'll need to be retouched. <laughs> the fireplace was a Facebook marketplace find as well. A young lady and her partner were moving. So um, I saw it and I think they named her Regina, but uh, they, I, I, when I bring things home, I actually love to like stage it and take a picture and then send it to the previous owners. And they're so appreciative because they just really get a kick out of knowing that somebody's appreciating their things as much as they did. So Regina is here. She keeps me warm during the winters. Um, it is a working electric fireplace. I have a kind of a running joke with my Facebook or sorry, my Instagram followers about this whole situation here. So these two dogs came from an antique store in Georgetown when I was traveling on business. So the woman who shipped them to me and sold them to me had no concept of how FedEx works and how you should probably package things, especially breakable things very carefully. So when they arrived to me, they were shattered in like, a hundred pieces and that was like an inadvertent DIY project where I basically had to super glue them back together. So they lived up here. Um, one day I was moving mirrors around my house and this piece, which is an anthropology mirror, um, was moved from downstairs and I hung it on a really tiny hook and I left for the day and I get an really frantic text message from my neighbor who heard a loud thud and asked me if I was okay. And I was like, what are you talking about? I come home and this mirror was like completely shattered on the ground. And this dog was another casualty. So this was like the second time he broke poor guy, which is why he has like a hole in his head. So I've, you know, joked about maybe giving him a little top hat or like baseball cap. <laughs> So another feature of this bedroom that I love 
is this outdoor terrace. Um, when I moved in, these French doors were actually sliding doors. Um, I was looking for French doors to replace the sliding doors with. And this lady who was basically rebuilding her house in Venice had taken down her house to the sticks and had all these doors available. So I got the doors for $90 and then hired a carpenter to drive out there to pick them up for me and install them. So voila, now we are outside and I basically furnished it like a little Moroccan jungle. -o. So um, the furniture was secondhand and then this table um, was from a garage sale up by where my parents live. And then I had to like figure out a way to drive it down 400 miles, but I think it was worth it. It definitely needs some help um, in getting it finished. But yeah, I like to sit out here and have like my afternoon tea or to work from here, another fabulous Zoom background when I'm in here for meetings. My design style is I would call it curated maximalism, um, a little bit of boho. Uh, it's just very eclectic. We are quickly walking through the bathroom because it's a mess and it's also the ugliest part of my house. So we're gonna go very fast. All right, this is the last room I'd like to show you, which is the cloth or closet office. Um, so there used to be obviously mirrors on these doors as most closet sliding doors are. And I covered it with a sticky wallpaper. And this is actually what got me featured on Apartment Therapy. Um, people go crazy over these flamingos. And again, the repeat with the black and white rugs here. I have yet to find a cute desk chair. So if anyone knows where I can find one, that would be great. Um, but this is a Herman Miller chair that's supposed to help my old lady back. And it's been kind of like, eh, so I'm looking for a replacement. Um, I like to do yoga in here. Um, sometimes when I have uh, an extra guest stay with me, I put an air mattress down here or they can sleep on the day bed if it's a child because it's pretty small. Um, but yeah, all the furniture in here is basically secondhand, including this Herman Miller chair. Um, this desk is actually from Target. So this is really the only new thing in here. I like to think of fashion as art. And so I thought, what better way to display my shoe collection but kind of create this semblance of like an art collection. Um, so they're up there along with some of my coffee table books. And I, I just how this does kind of encapsulate the whole clothis like vibe of combining, you know, some of my important life documents and those binders as well as shoes. So actually this mirror was picked up the same time I picked up my palm chandelier. Um, it was from a lady. And then I think she told me that she got it from a friend who died. So that didn't make me feel great, <laughs> but it hasn't brought me any bad luck. I don't think, um, this leopard is a friend to the tiger that was in my bedroom. And then, um, this is another piece, um, that's kind of chinoiserie themed that I love, um, because Again, being of Chinese descent, I do love incorporating a lot of chinoiserie um, elements into my home. This chandelier is a brother, a little brother of the one downstairs in my living room. I got this from a man and um, had to pick it up at a car dealership where he was like getting his car fixed. Um, my friend has the twin, so he sold me two for something crazy like $100. And I gave the twin to my friend and now it's in her house in Palm Springs. This piece was also purchased secondhand from some lady who I think she had some bad juju with this piece because she was so happy to get rid of it. And um, these flowers are red and I didn't really like that. So I actually painted over it. I, I'm sure like people would not be happy with me kind of 
you know, touching this original piece, but it just fits in with my decor a little bit better having those be fuchsia versus red. Um, the mirror over here was purchased on Facebook Marketplace as well. This is the turret room. So this is actually the ugliest room in my house. I'll turn the light on, but this is going to be a fun little renovation project eventually. <laughs> it's like a little Harry Potter closet room, as my friends like to call it. All my secrets are in there. So for me, home is being able to walk around barefoot. Um, just really a place to be comfortable. And I mean, I don't know how to walk in heels anymore, especially after the pandemic. And um, I love having my friends over and just, you know, having this sense of calmness and safety. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.